talk about this definition and highlight everything that was underlined uh, in the definition and, and, and highlight and specify a little bit better uh, what is the, exactly the meaning of these terms. The first requirement of the DHC system is that these are medical devices. What is the difference between a medical device and something that you go out and buy at any of the computer stores, any commercial grade devices? Well, a medical device right, is a device that meets the United States federal requirements of class 1 medical device. That means that the manufacturer registers its device and the product within the FDA. So if anybody that uses the same device has a major problem, for example, certainly the images do not appear anymore or they appear inverted or upside down or left right inverted in that case the user could call the FDA and say I have this product this medical device from this vendor and I want to report it so you Mr. FDA please notify the manufacturer and all the users of this product so that they are aware of this problem so we don't have any potential patient care impact so that's the importance of the registration of the medical devices with the FDA and another important component is that medical devices, including its software, are developed according to a quality system, means good manufacturing practices. That means that the software is controlled, that, that, the, that there is a list of what releases were implemented, that there is a complaint handling system, that you can, can track back errors and problems and issues. So uh, good manufacturing practices are critical to to make sure that the product, the device, the software has a certain level of reliability. The requirement differentiates really the medical devices from off-the-shelf consumer devices. Another important requirement is the scalability. Now scalable can be according to many, many different dimensions. Uh, one of these uh, scalability dimensions are of course with the amount of information to be stored. Can the uh, can your system uh, not only maintain a million, but maybe two million, three million, four million? Uh, the largest uh, enterprise system that I actually came across, actually as of today, stores one billion images, which is a lot. Imagine that this system would not have been scalable. They would have been failed and faulted a long time ago. So there are already systems out there that store one billion images. and. Um, you can actually look outside outside our application of medical imaging that that, that uh, and show that show that that scalability can be achieved for example if you take the number of uh, uh, digital photographs that are currently stored online with one of the major uh, manufacturers um, these are talk about uh, uh, trillions of images and trillions of data and uh, so it's not rocket science so to speak but we need to make sure that the solutions that we have in healthcare uh, meet those same scalability requirements also geographic scale uh, uh, an enterprise might uh, be covering a certain large area we need to make sure that we can cover a certain number of patients we also need to have an acceptable performance when we scale a system the system should not slow down, at least not slow down to a degree that it is really noticeable or, 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 or not acceptable anymore. When we get, when we change the screen, you know, when we pull up some data, it should be there within two seconds, maximum three. Anything more than three seconds is not acceptable because the, uh, it will really impact the efficiency of the people that are needing to access that data. Another a uh, key uh, component of the scalability will be that it, is, that it provides a seamless integration uh, with the different components. And also that it allows the scalability for different data types. And it includes several new ones, such as structured reports and pathology and, 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 and video clips. Whatever, that, uh, whatever the new technologies come, you know, uh, come out, that all need to be uh, scalable, stored in the core of the digital healthcare enterprise. 
Now, what is the information that is archived, stored, managed? Well, it's not only the images or the, the data objects, but it's also related information. Now, if you think about images or DICOM objects, the image manager or database stores a subset of the DICOM attributes that are in the header. For example, it might take the patient name, the patient ID, the date of study, the modality such as CT, MRI, anything that is important to be shown in a work list and that is retrieved when somebody does a query of the image manager. In addition, there is additional metadata that is stored to manage the data. For example, it might say, is this image being reported? Is this <coughs> or this exam or the study being reported on? Is it being verified? Uh, there are different steps uh, that, that, that need to be managed and needs to be recorded. Additional metadata might also be used to give some of the characteristics of the type of information as well as where the information is archived or stored. An important component is also a mechanism to perform statistics and troubleshooting in the QA QC tools. This was the system management console that we talked about earlier. We need to track and log transactions as well to find lost images. Imagine uh, if somebody calls, you know, the system administrator says, where is my study? Uh, I got a call from my specialist that the patient was scanned at 9 o'clock in the morning and now it's 11 o'clock and I cannot find it. Well, there are different reasons why it could be lost. It could be misidentified, it could be tagged to the wrong study, uh, it could, you know, many, many different reasons, but there need to be available tools for a system administrator to track it down and to find these lost or orphans images. We need to also have tools for the archive to support the management, allow the database maintenance, because many records need to be potentially cleaned, modified, deleted, uh, there might be a, a series description that is incorrect, that does not allow the hanging protocols to work correctly. Um, we might need to merge certain uh, records, things like that. We also need to make sure we can uh, facilitate changes and updates in the patient demographics. And they have to be exchanged between the PEX archive, of course, the Ventral Neutral Archive, as well as external image management devices. Let's say that uh, in cardiology, they find out that the name was misspelled of a patient. That information needs to be sent back and exchanged, so all the records have to be updated with the changed patient name, so that from now on, you can find the patient under the right name. The image manager itself, the database, looks as follows. And now let's assume that this will be a, a DICOM archive. But we'll talk about later about the vendor neutral archives. You find out that there's not only DICOM archives, but the different levels of vendor neutral archives. But assuming in this case, uh, this is a uh, DICOM archive, and the image manager that belongs to that archive typically uh, are based on SQL databases. That means there's an ANSI standard that allows the communication between uh, any user or any application and the database, and they use SQL SQL. So we need to make sure that we have access using SQL commands to do basic searches. And in addition, the image manager needs to support DICOM unique and required keys which are specified in the DICOM standard, such as the patient ID, the accession number, the, <coughs> the date of the study, and all the UIDs that are, uh, uh, that are stored in the images. We can also support many additional optional keys and one important component will be sometimes uh, a user might uh, do a wide open source, uh, wide open search, for example, for uh, Mr. Smith. Now, if you do a search for Mr. Smith in a database, and it is in the United States, you might find, I don't know, 10,000 matches. So it uh, actually used to be that some of the early installations, when there was no limit on the number of responses, uh, they actually would have to restart the whole database because it would actually be overloaded. So in many cases, there's typically a restriction or limit of the number of responses that gets back when we do wide open searches. And these are typically configurable. Another important critical requirement is lifecycle management. Lifecycle management has different components. One of the most important will be the retention mechanism. The retention mechanism means how long do we keep an image or data or an object or documents. 
Some people might argue, well, it doesn't matter, storage is cheap, we just keep everything as long as we can. And there are institutions that do that. Um, if you are a typical research institution, you might want to be able to trace back certain disease patterns and compare, let's say, <clears throat> the number of cancer cases from 1900 to 1910 to 20 and so on for who knows how long far back. However, that's not the case for most of the typical community type of hospitals. If a patient has uh, passed away, uh, we might not necessarily need to keep that images of that patient for another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Right? So we need to have a system that can easily delete the images and, and have a system for data retention depending on the type of, of data. Most states uh, require the information to be kept for seven years. Except for children, that is typically when they reach uh, the maturity, so that being 21 years, or sometimes, of course, forever. Now, this domomography is a little bit different story because of the potential recurrence for cancer. Uh, they typically keep those images forever or till the patient passed away. So the, the issue is, or the problem is, that how do we delete images? How can they be deleted? There are vendors that just delete the images only from the database and not from the archive which is potentially a problem because if the archive gets migrated, they suddenly reappear. Uh, so we really need to make sure that we have a mechanism not to only delete the indexes, but also delete any of the permanent storage information. Otherwise, we keep on accumulating the data forever and ever and ever. And it should be an automatic process, an, an automatic aging process. It should not have to be manually uh, done, but it should be all automatically built in based on certain business rules and certain rules about the type of images and the last access and, and the age of the patient and so on.